What's up everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie and today I think I've used enough journals <laughs> to tell you which ones I like the best. Wild hair <laughs> and another Christmas top. 10 cool points to those who know what it is. <laughs> Uh, I kept the lights off on my tree today because the last time I had the tree on, it was like all flickery and stuff. Nobody commented on it, so I don't think it was a big deal. I don't know. Do you prefer it on? Do you prefer it off? Who knows? But what I do know, I don't even think I can actually pick up all of these. Oh, it's going to make my camera shake. Is I have used many, many, many journals in my day. And I'm going to go through some of the ones that I like, some of the ones that I don't like, and tell you why or why not. The one that I'm currently using is this unassuming one right here. Uh, this is from Midori. Um, I'm almost positive, by the way, that I have done an in-depth review of all of these, with the exception of probably like the two that I used before I got into fountain pens. So yes, I'm, I'm almost positive I've done reviews of all of them. Um, but yeah, this is the one by Midori. It's uh, almost done. Almost everything that I have is lined. Um, I like this one. I like the fact that there's like not a whole lot of design on it uh, and that it is pretty simple. Um, I like this one fair amount. The paper is more absorbent than something like a Rhodia or Claire Fontaine, uh, so similar-ish to um, Bloodstrom if you're used to that. Uh, I like the fact that it has larger um, lines because I'm a lined girl um, and that it hasn't fallen apart and it's stitched pretty darn well. Uh, so I do like that quite a bit. It is more absorbent than I would like, so it does eat up some shading, uh, but it doesn't really feather like others that I've used. So this is the one that I'm using right now. Ultimate test that I'm going to answer after each notebook is would I buy it again? The answer for this one is probably not. Uh, if somebody gave it to me or it was on for like, you know, 50% off, maybe, but probably not. Um, then I have three that I'm going to just kind of skip over. Um, these are just basic moleskin notebooks. Um, this one is like a leather wrapped one. Um, these were ones that I used before I was even in to fountain pens. Um, and because of that reasoning, they're absolutely terrible for, for fountain pens. Um, this one is the one that I've officially marked as number one. I was basically using like just random, random pens in here and sometimes it was okay, but most of the time when I go back and look at it now, uh, it does feather quite a bit. It's super absorbent. The lines are very, very narrow. Um, and yeah, I just don't. I don't care for it. So I would definitely not buy this again, uh, but I mean, it was the thing that I used before I even got into fountain pens. Uh, then if we go into my actual fountain pen life journals, we have Erodia. Uh, this one I used from June to September of 2015. I liked this one quite a bit. Um, the line widths is a little bit bigger than I was used to from the other one, uh, so that took some time for sure. Uh, but obviously, like this one fits, fits, uh, uses <laughs> fountain pens very nicely. Um, and just going back through all of my writing, which by the way, my handwriting was terrible, <laughs> terrible. Uh, going back through all of it. Yeah, it handles it really, really well. Um, 
Would I buy this again? Probably. Um, Rhodia tends to be a bit expensive, um, but it does handle fountain pens beautifully. The dry time is a little bit long on them, uh, but it does do really well with shading and shimmers and all those good stuff. Um, it is a little bit textured, so you do feel a bit of a drag on the paper, but for the most part, you're fine. Uh, then I had a random notebook <laughs> from Hanson. Yes, the Mbop Hanson. I still listen to all of their music. They are amazing. I love them. Um, but this one I went through really quickly. I only used it from September to December because I never used the back pages because everything bled. Everything bled through this. This is really poor quality paper. Like really poor quality paper. But I used it because it was a Hanson one and uh, I'm a big Hanson fan. But no, I would never buy this again, ever. Then I got into my very first Lodstrom. Uh, so I used this from December 13th to uh, 2015 to uh, September 20th, 2016. Uh, this one has very small line widths. Uh, but that said, despite the fact that it was small, oh, I opened up the page where I used Lamy Dark Lilac. So nice. Um, the line width is definitely small, but I like the fact that these page uh, pages are numbered already by Loistrom. Uh, it's a pretty big notebook, so it, it has a lot of pages, um, like 250. And what I did like about it was that it, believe it or not, it didn't seem as textured as the Rhodia one, but... Um, it is more absorbent. So it does hold back a little on the shimmering and sheening. Um, so you're not gonna be able to get the full extent of your um, inks beauty really out into that. Then I used something called the Noble Note from Life uh, from September 20th, 2016 to November 18th, 2017. The lines on these ones are huge, like the line width, massive absolutely massive bananas um this one held together really nicely uh, i used it for a very long time what i liked about this one was for sure like that you could use like broad nibs 1.1 stubs all that kind of stuff uh, and it fit like a dream because those lines are huge so you definitely get to um, experiment more with what you're using um the Paper itself was similar to Lloydstrom in that it didn't show the sheening um, and shading beautifully, like, you know, super to a T, but this notebook did handle itself pretty well. Um, ooh, that is terrible ink. Did I write down what ink that was? No, I didn't. Um, this paper is coated, so it is definitely smooth, probably too smooth for some, um, but it held up pretty, pretty well. Would I buy it? Oh, Lloydstrom, did I say, did I say, would I buy Lloydstrom again? Um, yes, I would buy Lloydstrom again, but I would know what I'm going into now, um, that it is a little bit more absorbent. So if I wanted to have uh, something like be a super shader, uh, I'd use a different notebook. Would I buy another Life Noble notebook? Uh, Life is probably along the same as Midori, uh, where I probably wouldn't, but if the price was right and or it was a gift, then absolutely I would use it for sure. Then I come into a Claire Fontaine notebook, uh, just pretty basic branding there, nothing on the back, and it's just cloth bound. Uh, it did have a um, elastic band but I removed it because the backing for here was metal and it was chunky and it didn't lie flat and I, I hated that uh, that's a terrible feature uh, this one never laid perfectly flat for me and that drove me nuts um, the line width is pretty darn big on this as well um, the ink capability of this handles pretty nicely um, on my like sort of ink tortured test page everything did fairly well there is a little bit of feathering here and there uh, but for the most part it did well um, would I buy it again no I wouldn't there's just too many things uh, that I don't care for so I would not buy it again uh, then I went through another Rhodia notebook 
Um, I bought this one because it was like the metallic -y silver uh, and I thought that was really cool <laughs> versus the orange one that I had and it had been so long since I used a Rhodia notebook that I was curious to see what it would be like going back uh, and at the end of the day yeah it's it's a solid notebook um, Rhodia though is still not my favorite but I used these before I ever knew what, what Tumway River paper was uh, so I used to think that this was you know, top tier goat, um, but then I learned. Uh, then I did go back to a Lloydstrom, mostly because I thought that that cover was super, super, super cool. Um, and I missed the fact that like, these notebooks are just huge. There's just so many paper, papers, uh, <laughs> so many. Ooh, tornado warning that day, Saturday, August 17th, 2019. <sighs> Uh, but yeah, the, the line width is definitely super small and I don't love, love that, uh, but it's not bad. Um, I like the fact that the paper is automatically numbered. I do like numbered papers, um, but basically same thing as the other Leuchstrom. Um, would I buy it again? Maybe, maybe. It's not the best, but it, I, I know what I'm getting going into it. Then I used probably one of the most expensive notebooks that I have out of everything. And this is the first notebook that I used that felt differently. And that is, yeah, the Mont Blanc A5 size notebook. Uh, this was the first notebook that I spent some serious coin on. Up until now, the Rodeo ones are probably the most expensive ones that I used. Um, this was the equivalent of I think like forty dollars or forty five dollars at the time. Uh, it's probably it's over fifty now, I believe, uh, for Canadian dollars. I adore the way that this feels. I like that it's slightly floppy. The actual cover feels so luxurious <laughs> um, that I just like. Mm, I love it, uh, and then it has like kind of silvery edges. Uh, the paper line width the line width massive absolutely massive like i i want to say probably 10 centimeters i centimeters millimeters uh and it is a waste of space I'll, I'll be real with that it is a waste of space they could almost cut them in half like seven to me is perfect um and it's just like yeah it's too big. It's too, it's far too big. Uh, but it handles ink very, very nicely. I did use some pretty broad inks in here. Uh, there are a couple moments where I do see a little bit of bleed through, um, but not really like it's just a couple times throughout the, the entire notebook. Um, shades pretty well. I remember feeling like the texture of it was really nice. A uh, slight bit of feedback, the paper, but not too, too bad. Um, so definitely need to, to shorten or, or flatten out those, um, the line widths. Uh, would I buy this again? No, not unless it was 50% off because do I want another one? Yes. I want another one in my life because I just adore the way that it feels and it writes pretty, pretty decently. Is it the best paper in the world? No. And is it really expensive? Yes. And that is why it's really expensive. If it was about 50% off, then I would say, you know what? Yeah, I'd buy it again because it's pretty solid. But for the price point, no. Um, but if there was like a 50% off sale, yes. Uh, then I moved into a notebook that actually was sent to me. And I'm really disappointed <laughs> that they like went under or something because I've never seen them come back again. Um, and it's like basically an Elia note notebook. There's absolutely nothing on the front, nothing on the back as far as branding goes. But this was the first journal that I used that was Tomoe River paper. And I remember obsessing over this notebook, obsessing, so flipping good. Um, going from like the Mont Blanc notebook, which had like basically 10 millimeter ruling to this, which is very similar to Leustrom in the sense that it's teeny tiny little, uh, was, was definitely something I had to get used to, but just listen to this. Oh. It's 
It's music to my ears. Tomoe River paper, guys. I don't have to say much about that. Uh, it is just the best paper. This was a notebook that I used that basically no matter where it was, it lied, laid, lied perfectly flat. Um, it, the paper, obviously Tomoe River paper is some of the best paper I've ever used. Um, the very fact that it was able to lie perfectly flat is just the best in the world. Uh, it does have some pretty long drying time, but again, it's uh, Tomoe River and just holy smokes, like the best, the best. And there's so many pages. This took me so long to get through November 15th, 2019 to July 26th, 2020. Up until then, this was the best notebook I've ever used. Elia note, I wish that these were still a thing because would I buy it again? Yes, absolutely. It doesn't even have a ribbon marker, which for me, I much prefer. So would I buy that again? Oh, heck yeah. Then I hopped over to the world of Endless. Endless sent this to me. Uh, and I remember having mixed feelings about it at the time. Um, mostly because I was coming from what I considered the best notebook ever. <laughs> Uh, and then coming into this was definitely uh, a different experience um, because even though it is also still, or at least it was Tomoe River um, paper, it, it felt different. Uh, this is a much thicker Tomoe River, but I do like that it still does lie relatively flat. Uh, the lines were appropriate in my mind. <laughs> um, like I'm gonna guess they're about seven millimeters, which is pretty much where I prefer mine to be. Uh, and it does it does the job it's got a ribbon marker it's got an elastic it's a little small for my liking but the one that I've used since then is definitely beefier um, so would I buy this again yeah I would and I know now most of them have the regalia notebook uh, paper sorry which I just did a review on um, and I think that it's great so would I buy endless notebooks again you bet then then I discovered Galen Leather. Mmm. <sighs> Which is now still my all time favorite notebook. So, this is Galen Leather's A5. This one happens to be in a crazy horse leather finish, um, Tomoe River paper. This one is blank, uh, there's no lines on there, but it does come with the paper that you can put behind so that it kind of like fakes it out. Uh, which is strange to look at because I'm used to, of course, seeing lines. Um, but what I love is that it does lie flat. It's Tomoe River paper. There's lots of pages, so it takes you a long time to finish the notebook. Um, towards the very, very, very end um, and the very beginning of the notebook, uh, sometimes I felt like worried that the papers were going to come out because it like it was it's just so so thin and it did break a little bit um, but it never came out uh, it's held up pretty nicely and I have used another one which I'll show you in a minute um, since then it is a little bit expensive especially now uh, post COVID pricing uh, with shipping and the price of Tomoe River paper since it's not as easily accessible anymore. Um, but would I buy it again? Yes, I would. In fact, I have about four of them in spare because I love them that much. And I went from that Galen leather to this Galen leather, which is identical in every way, except that it is not their leather cover. This is their plastic vinyl. Uh, oh, and I actually have the lined thing back here. Um, so in every way it's identical, except that it doesn't have the leather cover. I do prefer the leather cover. Uh, it does feel a bit better than this, but that said, would I buy it again? Yes, I would. This is also less expensive. Then I was sent a GLP Creations, the author notebook. Uh, this one uh, I was sent and I used from November 28th, 2021 to January 21st, 2022. Um, this one is also Tomoe River paper. Um, this one didn't stay completely open, uh, so that did bug me. Um, and the line width 
decent also seven millimeters it's lines but it's like got kind of like dashes uh, in it so it's not totally a straight up line uh, but it doesn't lie perfectly flat and it is a little bit more narrow than a typical a5 would be um, so like this is an a5 this is also supposedly an a5 but there's like half an inch difference so there's a little bit off there um, but would I buy it again yeah I would the paper is pretty good like I said it's Tomoe River paper so you can't complain there um, and then I keep getting notifications this is driving me nuts <laughs> uh, and then the last one that I have officially gone through the whole thing for um, I do have other notebooks that I've reviewed since then um, that I've done like a bunch of like torture tests with um, but I haven't actually filled it and used it completely in its entirety. So this is the last one that I've used in its entirety. This was from January 2022 to August 2022 when I switched over to this one. Uh, and this is also Galen Leathers, but it is their Cosmo Air Light notebook versus the Tomoe River notebook. Uh, everything is pretty much identical. All the pros lays flat blank pages, uh, comes with the, you know, the backing um, pages that you can put behind so you can kind of like fake your own lines. <laughs> um, and shades and sheens really, really well. Uh, dry time is pretty long, especially even compared to Tomoe. Uh, dry time is pretty long, uh, but I really like this notebook too. Tomoe River is still better, in my opinion, than the Cosmo Air Light. Uh, which apparently also is now having the same problems as Tom Lee River paper. So who knows what's happening in the paper world? Um, would I buy this one again? Again, yes, I would. Would I prefer the Tom Lee River version? Yes, I would. But I would still buy it again. So this is my 16th notebook that I have used uh, since starting consistently journaling. Uh, like I said, I didn't count the first two because, well, technically they'd be 18, but they're not full because uh, I abandoned them halfway through because then I started getting into fountain pens and then got all snobby and stopped writing with anything other than fountain pens. Um, so I tried to make these ones as quick as possible and not get too long because this video is already pushing 25 minutes. But um, I do, like I say, have full reviews of each notebook if you want to see details. But what I need from you is if you've made it this far into the video, let me know in the comment section down below what your favorite notebook is, uh, especially if you do use fountain pens. I imagine most of you watching this do um, so that we can all get new ideas of notebooks and journals to try especially since we're coming into the new year uh, where most people try and start to journal for the new year um, but thank you for watching this video hit that like button if you liked it hit the subscribe if you want to see more usually every monday and friday and occasional tuesday but for the month of december 2022 you're going to see everything every weekday uh, so while you're down in the description, check out my Patreon account if you want to help support me and what I do here. And as always, I will see you next time. Bye. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. Just kidding. That's the beginning. <laughs> it is time for our Patreon crew shout out. Uh, this was filmed as of December 1st. So if you don't see your name, don't fret. I will update it as soon as I possibly can. My two ultimate humans, Daniel Rodney and Comp Dave, and all my VIPs, Susan, McCall Bennett-Lawrence, Karen Epstein, Gretchen Peters, Carol Lowry, Michael Simon, Subiwan Kenobi, Catherine Molina, Weilei Chang, Brian Law, Bill Pemberton, Lucas Bell, Robert Myers, Marissa Calvo, Eric Lineman, Stephen Baldwin, DigitalTent.Tech, Bobby A. Bailey, Bass, Joan Worthman, Luna Wolf Games, Aaron C., and Glenn Kelly. You guys make it super, super, super possible for me to keep making these videos. No matter what tier you're in, I thank you for supporting me on Patreon, especially those of you who've been with me since the beginning. You mean more to me than you could possibly ever know. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!